Senator Marshall. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chairman, welcome back for the committee. It was great to see you in Kansas City in the spring and appreciate you and your team coming there for a Commodities Future Conference. Thanks to a wide open southern border, we've seen an explosion of fentanyl deaths, fentanyl poisoning deaths, human trafficking. We've seen a, a large amount of illegal marijuana now being grown on farms, uh, marijuana farms in, in states bordering Kansas. At the end of the day, all this organized crime is uh, resulting in money laundering, for the most part with crypto. The Chinese triad, the Chinese organized crime uh, manages this crypto. Why is crypto the currency of choice for criminals? Senator, thanks for the question. I, I would say uh, twofold, not an exhaustive response, uh, certainly, but um, one, there really aren't borders to crypto. Um, you obviously can transfer money globally, fiat money globally, but in terms of, of cryptocurrencies, stable coins, actual digital assets, Bitcoin, Ether, um, it is a, in some respects, a borderless uh, type of currency. So it's easy to move across borders. Other than that, or in addition to that, excuse me, I would say it's the reason we're here today. There is largely a vacuum in the regulatory space on both the digital asset market side, which is what this committee uh, uh, needs to consider as it relates to the CFTC, but also the stable coin side, which um, deals with other agencies and other committees. So the larger picture is there's some state level regulation around money transmission. There's some federal regulation around FinCEN and AML, KYC, and CFP, I, but a lot's missing. If, if I could, don't, do you feel it's just as important for the crypto industry to know their customer as a bank does to know their customer? 100%. Okay. Um, as we go forward, I'm fearful that the SEC would have an outsized role in determining if something is digital commodity or not. And I'm equally concerned that your agency could be sued if it does not comply. Do you, uh, two questions here. I think it's the same answer. Do you support the SEC making decision on what it is under the CFT's uh, jurisdiction? And two, do you think it's a good use of the federal government's time to have two agencies fighting over the designation of a digital commodity? Senator, so sh short answer is no, but it's important that as we have, as two agencies done in the past, work together to make determinations around certain assets <clears throat> that I'll call it a gray area, exist in a gray area around what a security and a commodity is. And that has happened for the better part of five decades with futures. So you're not worried if the SEC says this is a commodity and the CFTC says, CFTC says it's not, that, and you get sued over it, you're not concerned that that's going to happen? I, I can't say that it's not going to happen. I think in this particular area, this digital asset space, there's a lot of legal questions of first impression. Uh, in our traditional commodity markets, we have been dealing with determining what's a, determining what's a commodity and a security for decades. So it's, it becomes a little bit customary and, and rote. Um, at this particular moment, I think it's important that we preserve, as I said in my opening statement, a core principle model, um, a self-certification model as well, which has worked quite well for the agency for the better part of two decades. But also, I do think, given the size of the market, the number of tokens, and some of the novel legal questions, it, would, it is important, as the agencies have done historically, work closely together to find consensus around whether or not a token is a security or a commodity. So what I'm concerned about is we're writing legislation that sets up a system for this fight in the courts, when instead we need to make sure that we're writing legislation that creates total clarity of the SEC's versus the CFTC's jurisdiction over digital assets. Do you share that concern? I, I share that concern to the extent or in regards to the fact that whatever this, con this committee considers in the future, I do believe there should be a system of listing contracts that is both similar and typical to what we have done at the CFTC in the past, but also does contemplate to an extent uh, a relationship between the two agencies that we can work efficiently together. And the last thing I'll say is, I do think there's a way to build a system of listing contracts that doesn't prolong or delay the listing of contracts in a regulated market. Um, we want to get these contracts, these tokens, on regulated markets as soon as possible so that we can eliminate or reduce the risk of customer loss 
and, cu- and, and enhance customer protections. So, so I'm a person who always believes that the government makes the simple complicated, and what leaders do is make the complicated simple. Wouldn't it be simpler if we just put this all under the CFTC's jurisdiction um, and them being the primary regulator, and maybe there's some off, offshoots for the SD, but, but truly designating this is the CFTC's baby. Senator, we'd be ha- I'd, I'd speak for myself. <laughs> I would be happy to do that. I think we have the capacity to do that, the expertise and the experience. Um, there may need to be some definitional changes to what a security is and what a commodity is to accomplish that outcome. All right. Thank you so much, Senator Welch. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and Senator Boozman uh, having this uh, hearing. Uh, 